Well, good evening, class. Um, welcome back. This is now chapter six of the book, and the subject for tonight is that of globalization. Now, globalization is nothing new, and we should not really think of it as something new. It is, however, something that has evolved and continues to be an evolving subject. And why do we say it isn't new? Well, let's think back through history. Let's go way, way back and bring it up to the, the present day. The first globalization that we probably would see uh, historically is with, in Babylon, more than 5,000 years ago. Babylon was a city um, of thousands of people. It had docks that brought in spices from throughout the world, food from throughout the world. Through the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, there was enormous trade going on. Um, it was a very fertile area as well. Okay? And it existed that way for uh, hundreds of years, thousands of years, you had the Persian Empire. It eventually um, would be eclipsed by the Egyptian Empire, which again was a trading empire. And at the same point in time as these are going on, you have the Phoenicians, if you study history. Um, I think that you'll find there in the, in the same arc of uh, ancient history, uh, in what is now modern day Lebanon, uh, traded throughout the Mediterranean. And then finally we give way to the Roman Empire, the Appian Way, the, the use of roads on, you know, not just cart paths, but actual roads to facilitate not only military conquest, but commerce as well. And then we had the first truly commercial, I would say, route, and that's the Silk Road, linking um, what would then be uh, Eurasia to the Far East. Okay? Now that gives way over the spectrum of time as we have the development of the Americas. Um, you have Marco Polo that did, I know that, for the Silk Road, but then you have the Americas, which are you know, the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal. Uh, now not only is it necessary in the, in the scope of globalization that we be able to do it, but now we're, we're focusing on speed, the ability to do it faster and cheaper. And then as we enter the last half of the 20th and now the 21st century, it would be the Internet which started out as a small, um, probably science experiment, might be the best way of putting it, and now is something that becomes the um, Internet of Things. Everything is on the Internet through Amazon and Google, etc. So now as business people, as we, if we recognize globalization is not a new phenomenon, it's a continuing phenomenon, what do we want to look at? And I'm going to suggest to you that from a globalized perspective, what we really look at is the idea of supply chain management. And what we mean by that is to manage the flow of equipment and supplies from the point where uh, you have raw materials to the point where you actually sell the finished goods. Okay? So on a, in a globalized area, what, what do we think of? Okay? Well, the first thing is the point of extraction or assembly could be anywhere in the world. A diamond mine in South Africa, an assembly plant in China, Okay, uh, a tin mine in um, South America it could be anywhere. Okay, now that once you have these goods, you then have to transit them, get them from where they're manufactured or where they're extracted, to the point where either they're going to be wholesaled or retailed, and that can be done in a variety of ways. You could have trains, planes, automobiles. You could have boats, um, and all of these methodologies are governed by later on ethical and legal considerations. And ultimately, the goal for us all, as business people, is to get the goods to the point where we're going to be able to engage in purchase and sale. So we've made the goods, we've transported the goods, and now we want to be able to buy and sell with them. And as I said, you're going to have ethical and legal considerations as you go through each step. And now finally, the other thing to think about in this is how are, how are we accomplishing this? Because now we've got a, a supply chain, and we've got rules for the supply chain, but who's going to function it? And that's why I put that on the bottom. Think about it now. You're, we're sitting. I'm sitting here in Needham. You're sitting in your offices, watching this. Uh, the question comes up then: How do I get that person in China, South America, uh, Africa, to do what I want them to do? Right? Uh, you may have to have a licensing agreement or franchise agreement with them that that they're doing work for your company. You might have to direct, have to directly invest. In other words, buy the tractors that will extract it or buy the equipment that they will use. Okay? Um, another way might be offshoring. We put that there. The idea of offshoring basically is they've got the people 
okay, that you need, equipment you need, you give it to them, you contract with them to do the work. And you're sitting in your office um, being the, um, the coordinator more than anything else. So globalization and the, the um, challenges of it, they've been with us forever, and, and they're not going away. And what the only difference is going to be is we're doing things faster and faster. So let's look forward here. And some of these things here, and I want to take that thing faster and faster. Just a little anecdotal. When I started in business uh, 30 years ago, I used to leave with a pen and paper and a roll of the quarters so I can make a phone call. And I would not be in touch with my office, except for maybe a phone call, lunch, and one at dinner, um, until the end of the day. Um, and I had an answering machine and things like that that I relied on. Over time, I got a pager, and then we got cell phones and all the rest, a very short period of time. But the cycle time is what I noticed. It used to be that uh, a client called you, and you had a, uh, a few days before the letter arrived with the inquiry that you needed, and then you had time to, to turn around. Now you, you have to think that with a text, the cycle time is almost immediate. And that's really the difference in our globalization. And I think that as you go forward, that would be one of the big differences that you could focus on. Looking forward, I, I think there's at least three, and there's probably a, a slew more of ways that we're more globalized. The first one is financial. Okay? Uh, we do Forex trading and the carry trade every single day, 24 hours a day. Forex is foreign exchange, trading um, one currency for another. The carry trade is borrowing with a currency and then uh, using that money to invest. You're paying back a lower interest rate than you're investing it at. Uh, social. Now, we always had migration, okay? In other words, people left Europe, they came to America. But now, um, you have mass migration, okay? As a function of uh, wars, for example, in Syria. Um, you just, the, the numbers and the ability to move now, putting aside uh, restrictions on immigration, which exist, but the ability to move now by a variety of medium, in other words, planes, trains, automobiles, is far and away greater than it was before because you're not relying on a horse and buggy anymore. You can drive at 60 miles an hour. There's more person-to-person -person interaction. Look at us. Um, here we are, I'm giving a video to you. Okay? But think of all the different ways that you communicate in the course of a day. Okay? That leads toward globalization. You can text, Facebook, um, send an email, snail mail if you want. Um, a, you could do group meetings. Person-to-person -person interactions are, are what drives um, this globalized union, so to speak. And then this intergovernmental trade agreement, this is probably an issue of our current election. Um, we have the Trans-Pacific Partnership that President Obama is trying to, uh, to get through Congress. You had NAFTA that uh, President Clinton put through Congress. You had the European Union with the recent Brexit. So there's some, one that's going the other direction. They're breaking up. Okay, so all these trade agreements, all this, this is about trade, an ability to move goods and who's going to get the most for them. Okay? Um, and as you listen to these conversations, you should pick that up. That really, putting aside the hyperbola of politics, in the final analysis, they're talking about business. Okay? And the big thing are these trade agreements. And finally, there's intellectual globalization. Okay? In other words, um, the idea of education. Okay, now, as we sit here going to Framingham State, our college, our university, also has satellites in uh, South Korea. We have uh, one down, I believe, in Central America. They're all over um, the world. And there is no university in the Boston area that doesn't have some other off-site location. Uh, Boston University has a uh, location in, I believe, Dubai. Uh, Suffolk University, uh, where I went to law school, also has a location in Africa. So all these universities are reaching out okay, through um, the various media to, to new students, to formal education. And then there's the idea of research and development. Again, the ability to communicate now allows scientists, educators, to discuss issues in real time across vast differences. And this in and of itself has, has fostered full, uh, even greater globalization. Um, anecdotally, another example I give to you. 
uh, I was a biochemistry major, biology with chemistry minor. Um, my class was the first class that did not have to learn German uh, as a requirement of, of um, graduating. Before then, if you graduated with a degree in chemistry, you had to be fluent in German because the idea was, was that a lot of chemistry was done in Germany. Um, even that simple requirement, okay, which existed for more than a century, lent itself toward this idea of globalization. Okay? So what, when you have globalization, nothing is smooth. We should be able to get that out of our current election. There are a series of what I call stressors that come into play. Okay, this is not, it's not easy to reach across the aisle, I guess they say in politics. And I listed some of them here. Okay? As you sit in your office and you're doing business with somebody a long way away, right? On the other end of the phone or the other end of that connection is a person, okay? And they're wondering things about you just like you are about them. You know, what's their belief system? They might not have the same uh, view of the world as you have or concept of self. If they're in a communist country, they might look more at the collective whole than you do. Um, ethnocentric. You might think of yourself as uh, European or um, from China, Chinese, or Japanese, or uh, Central American, okay? or, or I think he said European, or African. Okay? When we think of ourselves in these ways, we bring, not in a bad way, we bring biases and thoughts into play. And those have to be meshed together with other people so that we can have this globalized economy. This geographic, I, I'm an American, right? I don't think the same way as somebody who's in Europe. I don't see the world the same way, okay? And I wouldn't see the same way as somebody who was coming from Australia, let's say. Everybody brings a different perspective, okay? And globalization, if anything, okay? When we get to the next one, goals and, and how do we, methods, of how we do things, okay? The objective of globalization, okay? And um, all the methods that were spoken about, you know, whether or not you're going to um, be an international or global company or, or domestic or whatever, okay? However these look, is what you're trying to do, it's like a gear. You're trying to mesh your views with that of a foreign country in a useful way. Trying to have the gear mesh, okay? Not that the teeth come together, okay, and that you don't get any traction, but that the two teeth interdigitate. They go between each other nice and smooth, okay? And that requires both sides to understand the other side, to be aware of themselves, okay, but also be aware of the other person, okay? Um, so that's why I put this, this tension. On one side, anybody who's involved in globalized work, that's all of us, okay, we have a hope. We're either going to make money, or we're going to make progress, or have a better life, or whatever. On the other side, though, we're really frightened, right? You, can't, you don't know who the other person is. You might not ever meet them, okay? What are their goals? It might not be my goals, okay? So you've got this tension pulling back and forth that um, defines the relationship, okay? And that's really the, the probably the, the kernel that you have to take away here, which is awareness, okay? Um, I, when I took a course at uh, Framingham about globalization, um, had Professor Harrison, great course, okay? That was one of the things I walked away from with that course, awareness of, wow, you know, um, in, in my generation, that uh, you know, creatures of the 60s, we did things the American way, or, or as John Wayne used to say, American way, okay? And everybody should follow us, okay? That was our mindset. The world has changed. I think the book calls it, the world has become flat. The world has changed. Now we look at the other person. How the heck do they do it? Okay. What's that person on the other side? Um, you know, what's their mindset? Is this somebody we want to deal with? Is it somebody that um, we have to use a different model? We just can't go in there gangbusters and say, we're going to do this American way. Maybe we have to um, hire them, okay? Or invest in them in order to get them to come our way. Um, you have questions now, right? It's not simply I walk in and I'm do business. You know, what suppliers do I use? What workers do I use? Not everybody's, you know, just as in the United States, not everybody's going to be on the up and up. We go to a foreign country, not everybody's on the up and up. People are the same throughout the world. 
you got to kind of learn the territory. Um, there are some countries that we have boycotts with. We have embargoes. Who we do business with? So you got that bigger question before you globalize. Am I going into this market? You might not be allowed to go into that market. Or you might, you know, in an unfettered sense. You might need special licenses, special permissions. And then what rules and ethics do we follow? Okay, now this, you might sit there and say, um, does he mean, should we do right and wrong? I, I don't mean that. <coughs> Excuse me. Think of it this way. There are some countries, okay, where certain um, actions, okay, like um, not uh, giving a gratuity to somebody is considered normal. And if you don't do it, they get upset. But in the United States, that could be viewed as a bribe. And if you do do it, there's a, a, a law that says that if you should pay um, fees to a foreign national in order to get some special consideration, okay, you can be held criminally liable for that. So, you know, that's just one example, okay? But there are many others, okay? And I would in, uh, in, enjoin, I would ask you or tell you good thing to do is if you go online and you want to see how important it is that we know what this the rules are um, and what the ethics are okay if you go online to the um, CIA fact book it's called the Central Intelligence Agency puts out a fact book um, and that fact book tells you everything you would ever want to know about a country okay that's its job in a, in a commercial way of course they spy as well uh, but in a commercial way the Central Intelligence Agency is um, a collector of information about all different countries. And they have a fact book that you can look. So if you were doing business in a certain country, you could go and look at that country and say, okay, I should be doing X, Y, and Z. I should avoid X, Y, and Z. And it's fascinating to read. It's a very detailed book. So these are some of the questions. Globalization, as we started out, is not new. But what you have to do is be aware of it and be aware of how you're being global, how it's impacting on you, and how you're going to react to it. Okay? Because globalization is not going to stop. Um, if anything, we're going to become even more enmeshed. Um, it's not, you're not going to reverse it at this point in time. It's been around for about 5,000 years. So it's how do we react to it? And in a very real way, and this isn't a dirty word to say, it's how do we exploit it? Because we're business people. That's why we're here. So that's concepts for uh, globalization. The book gives you a lot more detail, but I wanted to just give you some of my thoughts and uh, throw them out there for you to think about. And in a few minutes, I'll record the next chapter, which is chapter seven, which is about entrepreneurship. So I'll see you very soon for that chapter as well. Take care. Bye-bye.